Welcome to the Lakewood Church Wednesday night service. We are so glad that you have tuned in and joined us from all over the world. How amazing is that, that we can connect through the internet. And thank you for being a part of the Lakewood family. We want to be a blessing to you. We want to be an encouragement to you. And I just pray that God speaks to your heart tonight in a special way. So if you've got your Bible, we're going to get into the Word of God tonight. And we are in a series on the topic of the Holy Spirit. And tonight is the third and final teaching. And I want to talk about recognizing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to know how to hear, how to recognize the voice of God. And God speaks through His Holy Spirit. Uh, if you'd like to turn in your Bible with me to John 15, we will read that in a moment. And also, if you'd like to, you can download my outline from our website. It has all the points and all the scriptures. You can do that now or you can do that later. But it's there to help you in case you miss some of the points and some of the scriptures. In the first teaching about the Holy Spirit, we talked about how Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be our wonderful helper and constant companion. It's an amazing thing that God did for us. And, and I am encouraging you and myself in this series to become more aware of His presence, to become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit and His work in our personal lives because He is there to help us. And in the second teaching, we begin talking about ways to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I shared six ways that we can do that. Uh, one way is through the inward witness or an impression in our spirit. Another way is through the presence of peace in our spirit. I explained all six ways, and so if you missed it, then you can go back to that teaching one or two, and you can catch up on this series. Tonight, I want to continue on this subject because there are so many ways that God speaks to us and leads us through the presence of His Holy Spirit. So tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share six more ways to help you recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit in your personal life. God speaks to all of His people. God will speak to you. Don't get hung up on God doesn't speak to me. Don't get hung up on I don't know how to hear His voice. Listen, we're all beginners. We're all learners, and this is why I'm doing this series. There are ways to recognize His voice. And as you spend time with Him, and as you practice listening to Him, and recognizing and discerning whether it's Him or, 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 or the voice of Satan or lies, you will become more in tune to the Holy Spirit, and you will grow and you will mature, and you will learn how to hear the voice of God. So... Let's begin by reading John 15, verses 13 through 14. Jesus said this about the Holy Spirit. He said, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine, and He will declare it. To you. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth. He will always glorify Jesus and not man. He will always speak only what Jesus tells him to speak. I like how the Amplified Bible says it. It says, The Holy Spirit will receive what is mine, and He will reveal, declare, disclose, and transmit it to you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the revealer. When God desires to lead you or speak to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. The Holy Spirit will reveal the things that God wants you to know, things that you need to know, things that you wouldn't ordinarily know in the natural. I think about an example from uh, the book of Acts chapter 5. God revealed something to Peter that he could have never known on his own. A couple named Ananias and Sapphira said, uh, sold a piece of property, and then they lied about how much they sold it for because they didn't want to uh, give as much to the Lord as they should have given. And so when they came in to tell Peter how much they sold the property for, the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and said, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? 
So God revealed that to Peter, something he didn't know, and he exposed the lie. I do want to repeat this, what I said last week. There are many believers who go through life without any supernatural direction, and that is not God's will for your life. He gave you His Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and speak to you. And there are times in our life when we simply cannot rely on our own understanding. We need divine counsel. We need divine wisdom. And you know, today there are so many voices speaking into our lives. I, I just thought about how television, social media, the entertainment industry, industry and politics, just to name a few, all these voices telling us what to, uh, what to do, what to believe, what to wear, what not to wear. Whatever it is, they're all speaking into our lives. And the most important voice in your life should be God's voice. We've got to learn to tune out those other voices and learn to hear His voice. Jesus said in John 10, 27, He said, My sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Jesus is your shepherd. You are His sheep. He takes care of His sheep. And we should know His voice. We should understand His voice. And that's why I'm trying to explain to you from the Bible how to hear His voice. It means that you have to pay attention to and listen to your spirit where the Holy Spirit dwells. We are a body. We are, we are a spirit. We live in this body and we have a mind, a soul, our emotions. But the real us, the, the part of us that will live on forever is our spirit. God is spirit. We are spirit. We are created, created in His image. And when we go to heaven one day, our spirit will go be with Jesus. And so in the meantime, God has sent the Holy Spirit to live in us so that He can be with every one of us. And so He is, he is speaking to us all the time. Now, I think this goes without saying, but there are many of you that are new to the things of God, but you have to know the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you everything. We have the Word of God and the wisdom of God. We have common sense, you know, and, and God will make, help us. We have the wisdom of God to help us make the daily decisions. We don't need to hear from God all the time, but we must trust that God is watching over our lives at all times. And even when we don't hear His voice, even when we don't sense His leading, we have to know that He is still directing our steps and He will reveal anything to you that you need to know. So you don't need to worry about that. You say, well, God hasn't spoken to me in a while, but you know what? Just keep doing what He told you to do last time. Just be faithful, be consistent, and God will show you what you need to know. Let me answer a few questions. What does God's voice sound like? Well, according to the Bible, it could be a word of wisdom that God drops in your spirit. It could be a, word, uh, a sense or a word of warning. Uh, the Holy Spirit can drop insight into your spirit, something that you don't know like He did with Peter. Uh, it could be a word of direction for you. Uh, sometimes it's a word of uh, correction or conviction. And that's okay because, see, the Holy Spirit... Uh, the Bible says that, the, that God disciplines those He loves. So when He corrects you or brings conviction into your life, that means He loves you and He wants you to get on the right track. So it's a, it's a voice of conv uh, conviction and correction sometimes. Sometimes it's a reminder to do the right thing. You have to know this. God's voice is a voice of encouragement. It's always a voice of love and mercy and never condemnation, shame, or guilt. See, there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. And a lot of people get hung up on, on uh, this in this area. Uh, they feel a sense of guilt, even after asking God to forgive them if they did wrong. So that is not from God. That's not His voice. That's from Satan. See, you have to believe that God forgave you and release, uh, or, I'm sorry, and resist the lies of the enemy. Some people have a sense of shame because of trauma or things that they have gone through, but that is not from God. Again, Satan is the one who comes to lie to you, to steal to you, uh, from you, to kill and destroy you. 
So you have to discern the difference between God's voice and the voice of Satan and really the voice of people. God's voice, it's not a voice of confusion. It's not a voice of doubt or fear. And actually, this has really helped me in learning to recognize the voice and leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have to just go through the process of elimination. What am I feeling? Is it fear? Is it confusion? Well, that's not from God. There have been times when I have not known exactly what decision to make, but the first thing I try to do is filter out the wrong voices. And I do that by eliminating these choices that make me feel confused or worried or, fear, or fearful. For example, one time I decided to do, to go to a certain place, but two people close to me discouraged me from going. So I prayed about it and I still felt like I should do it. And at first, uh, their words, they made me doubt my decision and then it made me a little fearful. What if I go and I'm not supposed to go and something happens? And that's when I recognize that's not from God. See, God will warn us at times, but He will not bring fear. Knowing these things will help you know the voice of God. Another question that I ask myself in recognizing the voice and leading of God is this, does it agree with the Word of God? See, the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you to do anything that disagrees with the Word of God. You are not the exception ever, never, ever. <laughs> You're just not. So just realize that. Another question that I like to ask myself is, do I have peace in my spirit about this? A lack of peace is the Holy Spirit warning you. And we talked about this last week, but this is just a great barometer for you to live by. And, and I will tell you this, we do learn by our mistakes. I've made mistakes, but, and I've missed it, and we are going to miss it at times, but when we do, we know what to look for next time. We know what to listen for next time. It's a learning curve for, for us. And, um, and so that's, that's something to remember, that we will miss it, but we learn from our mistakes. We don't get it right all the time, but as you spend time with God and in His Word, you begin to recognize His voice. And so as I, uh, I want to say this, as I said, I gave you six ways to recognize um, the voice of the Holy Spirit last time. So we're just going to step right in and we're going to start with number seven. I'm going to give you six more ways you can recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. The first one is this, the Holy Spirit leads and speaks to us through God's Word, through the wonderful, powerful Word of God that you just need to read every day and, and memorize and meditate on in order to get it into your spirit. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture, it's God-breathed. It's not like any other book. It is inspired by God. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word, of God, uh, the word that God speaks is alive and it's full of power. I'm going to say something. This is so important. The Bible is the number one way God speaks to you. So if you just start with that foundation, you're going to begin to hear the, word, uh, the, the voice of God and that you're going to be able to recognize the leading of the Holy Spirit when you start with the Word of God. See, every time you read the Bible, God is speaking to you and He is revealing His will to you. His Word, is a, it's a lamp unto your feet. It's a light to your path. And so the Bible reveals to us the thoughts of God, the wisdom of God, and the commands of God. And so I'm just saying right now, you may have questions about the will of God for your life, and the answer is in the Bible. You're searching, but have you got into the Bible and understood what the Word of God is, what the Word of God says, and what the will of God is? See, that's why we must read the Bible for ourselves, because the Holy Spirit will help you understand it. You know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about several things the other day. And one thing He said to me just startled me. He said, my people are too busy. My people are too busy with their own idols to spend time in my Word. They are too distracted by other things to spend time in my Word and they've gotten away from the truth. Well, I don't believe that's you, 
But I want to just encourage you right now, if things are pulling you away that are keeping you from the Word of God, listen, put God first, get up every morning or in the evening, whenever time, a time is good for you, and start reading the Bible. You say, I don't understand it. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. He will help you understand the Word of God. See, sometimes as we are reading the Word of God, God speaks to us through a, a certain scripture. It's like He just uh, illuminates a passage, and all of a sudden it's like God takes this big old highlighter and speaks to you through a scripture. And it's exactly what you need that day. It may even be a word to encourage you. It, it could give you insight. Or listen to this. It could be a word to confirm something that you have been praying about. See, that's what happens when you read the Bible. See, the Word of God, in the Word of God, God is speaking to you. And so you need to stop and meditate on that scripture that He highlights for you and receive what He is saying to you. Another way the Holy Spirit leads us, and this is number eight, is this. The Holy Spirit leads us through a divine, or I should say His divine flow of compassion. My dad used to call it the divine flow of love. He had a book on that. Matthew 936 says of Jesus, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. All through his ministry, Jesus was moved by compassion and the Holy Spirit directed him to minister to people. When he'd feel that compassion in this verse, he fed all those people. Sometimes he, when he felt that compassion, he would follow it and he would minister to someone, uh, forgive them of their sins, heal them. Sometimes he would go to their homes. He looked up at Zacchaeus one time, a sinner, a tax collector, and he said, Zacchaeus, I'm going to go to your house today. Why did he do that? Because the Holy Spirit moved him with compassion. And so we can sense that same divine flow of love rise up in our spirit toward people. And like Jesus, we should follow it. So when you feel an unusual compassion toward a person, it's because someone is in need of a touch from God. And God wants to use you. See, God wants to use you. You may feel a compassion toward somebody you know, and you need to pray for them or call them. Maybe it's a person that you don't know. You see in the grocery store, you see at the bank, but God wants you to reach out to them with a word of encouragement. See, when you can't get a person off of your mind, you keep thinking about them, that is usually the Holy Spirit leading you to pray for them or to help them in some way. It is God saying to you, I love that person. I'm interested in that person. I want to minister to them through you. See, it may be that you need to say to that person, is there anything I can pray with you about? Or God is impressing upon me to tell you that He loves you and He cares about you. I'm going to be praying for you for the next few days. See, we are so used to knowing God and His supernatural power that we can take it for granted if we're not careful. But most people have never even experienced it before. And one simple act of love on your part will allow them to experience God's supernatural love and power. Even this morning as I was praying in tongues, I, I, uh, the Holy Spirit just brought one of our staff members to my spirit. And so I began to pray for her. And I just sensed, you know, I'm just going to act on that. And I texted her and I said, hey, this morning as I'm praying, you know, I, as I was praying, the Lord brought you to my heart. And I just want you to know I'm praying for you. Well, as I acted on that in faith, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And all of a sudden, I began type, typing words I didn't expect to type. The Lord spoke, and, you know, and I just began to say, God is, God is going to do this and God is going to do that. I'm not talking about specific direction, but general direction. And it just came out of me. See, I couldn't have known that without the help of the Holy Spirit. And so I texted to her, and of course, she said it helped her so much. But see, that's how the Holy Spirit uses you. I thought about another instance when uh, several years ago I used to mo uh, monitor the emergency calls at Lakewood on the weekends. And one Saturday morning, this young couple left a message and requested that someone visit them in the hospital 
uh, they had a new baby and there were complications with the baby's health. And so, you know, I plan to do what I did most of the time. I, I plan to send it to one of our hospital ministers that day and ask them if they could go. But you know, before I did that, I couldn't get this couple off my mind. I knew that the Holy Spirit was prompting me to go see them myself. Well, I was struggling with that idea because, you know, I had little twin girls. I had a very busy day and I had things I wanted to do. But then I thought about the fact that God's plans are always better than mine. And so I said, God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go see them myself. So when I arrived at the hospital room, the mother began to cry and she said, Lisa, just this morning I prayed this prayer. Lord, I know you healed Lisa when she was a baby. Please send one of the Osteens to see us. And I was able to encourage them, pray over their baby. I think it blessed me more than it blessed them because I no longer cared about my plans. God used me. And it's so amazing when you allow God to use you. It's so fulfilling. See, we don't want to become so busy that we forget what life is all about, and that is sharing the good news with hurting people. You may be the only believer in a person's life. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that again. You may be the only believer in a person's life that you work with, in your family, and you are the hands and feet of Jesus. And when you open your mouth, and follow the Holy Spirit, your voice will become God's voice. Your hug will become God's hug. One touch from God through you can change a person's life forever. It's so powerful. Allow God to use you. Listen to that. Be aware of that divine flow of compassion because just as it, as it came out of Jesus to help people, it will come out of you. Okay, another way the Holy Spirit leads us is number nine, and it is the Holy Spirit speaks to us at times through dreams and visions. And this is not the most common way God speaks to his people, but it is one way. Let me tell you the difference between the two. A dream, <clears throat> excuse me, is when a person is asleep and a vision occurs when the person is awake. And all through the Bible, God spoke to people at times through dreams and visions. I think about how the prophet Joel said this. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. God spoke to Joseph through dreams as a teenager and revealed a part of his future to him. He didn't understand it all, but he showed Joseph that he would be in a place of rulership one day. God spoke to another Joseph in several dreams about the Virgin Mary and the baby Jesus, and, and God gave specific direction to him through those dreams. I think about in Acts 16, God spoke to the apostle uh, Paul in, the, in a vision it was a vision about his ministry to the Macedonian people. See, the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter. This is another example. Through a vision, when he was spending time in prayer, he was up on the top roof of a home. He was spending time in prayer, and God gave him a specific vision and specific instructions about the Gentile believers. And then in the vision, he said, I want you to go to the house of Cornelius, where, where Peter led the whole family to the Lord. So those are examples of dreams and visions. You know, over the years, I've had, I think I was only, think I've had three dreams and I had one vision. And you know what? It doesn't, you don't, you can live your whole life and never have a dream from God and a vision God, from God and it doesn't mean anything, you know? And I want, you, I want to say that. But um, I, the vision I had was the first time I was preaching and I found myself over myself, looking down at myself, preaching and struggling. And I witnessed the anointing descend upon me like a coat or a mantle. And it was the very first time I've ever preached in the main sanctuary at Lakewood. I had taught in smaller classes and I was so very nervous. And, I, and really, I didn't think I was going to able to do it until God showed me that vision that he was anointing me to preach. And now when I, 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 I sense the anointing to study. I sense the anointing to preach. I don't always 
sense this strong, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it. I just know that I'm anointed and that I'm not doing it on my own. You know, and, and one dream, I'm thinking about another dream I had, the Lord showed me that I needed to pray for someone. In another dream, he just gave me a glimpse of my future and it came to pass. I didn't share it with anybody, any of those, until later on. But I pondered them in my heart and God brought them to pass. He showed me things in the present and he showed me something to come. And so God may speak to you through a dream or vision. And if he does, you know it's from God. See, a dream from God is not going to put fear on you. It's not going to bring confusion. You won't be afraid or confused about anything. That's not the way God functions. God is a God of peace. Sometimes it's just because we ate a big old pizza the night before. You know, if, if it puts fear on you, it's not from God. In fact, I've had people say to me at times, I've learned this. I learned it from not saying it in the past. Say to me, I had a dream about you. And I say, wait a minute, was it good or bad? Because I don't want to hear it if it's not good. You know, some people, they don't, they don't realize what they're doing, but I'm not going to let anybody tell me a dream that they think is from God that was bad because that's not from God. And so if you sense your dream is from God and you don't understand it, then ask God to reveal to you the meaning of it. And until you understand it, just ponder it in your heart and wait on Him. You know, I was thinking about a man in our church. He's now a pastor today. He used to, to be our youth pastor. And years ago, when we were at the old building and we had 50 acres, he was in the worship service. And during the worship service, he had an open vision. And he said, as he was worshiping God, God the Lord opened his eyes to see in the spirit world. And in the vision, he was looking down upon Lakewood and he could see all the 50 acres that we owned at the time. And he said all over the property, there were a host of angels and they were outlining our property and our church side by side like soldiers. And he said they were watching over and protecting every person who entered the church. He described it fully to us and then sent a letter and I still have that letter today. And I believe that. See, I love how God has supernatural ways of communicating with us. And, and when I say that many believers go through life without any supernatural direction, this is what I'm talking about. God is the revealer. He will speak to you and lead you through the Holy Spirit. Okay, another way the Holy Spirit leads us is number 10, and it's this. The Holy Spirit places divine desires in your heart. Psalm 37, 4, I'm going to read it to you. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. See, I, I really believe that that means God will bring to pass the desires that you may have, the petitions of your heart, the things that you're praying about. And then I also think it means that God places desires in your heart for a reason that fits your purpose and your destiny. I didn't know it at the time, but I've said this before, but God placed a desire in me to study the Bible as a teenager. And I just thought it was sort of normal. I would read the uh, books to help me understand the Bible. I would take Bible courses. I just love the Word of God. And so eventually, when I was in my late 20s, I guess, God put me, or middle 20s, God put me in a position to teach the Bible at the church. And then I, uh, my dad asked me one time to preach in the main sanctuary, and so I've been preaching ever since. But see, I can look back and see now that God placed that desire in me, a love for the Word of God, which we should all have, but it was not only a love for the Word of God, it was the gift of teaching. And so he was getting me ready and prepared for my calling. He may place desires in your heart. There, there are so many examples in the Bible that we can look at. Moses had this God-given desire to help the children of Israel. Acts, Acts 7, 23, listen to this scripture. When Moses was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit the fellow Israelites. It came into his heart. See, he was a prince in Pharaoh's palace, and yet he had this passion and this desire to help and live among his own people. 
God put that desire in Moses' heart and later used him to deliver the Israelites from Egypt. I think about another man in the Bible, Nehemiah, God gave him this burning desire to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. He was so passionate about it and he wept over it and he prayed about it until God brought it to pass. See, Jesus said in John 15, John 15, 4, he said this, abide in me and I will abide in you. Jesus will begin to impart his desires into your heart as you abide in him. And then he will anoint you to do it. And that really brings us to the next point because another way the Holy Spirit leads us is number 11, he anoints us for your purpose. The Holy Spirit will anoint you for your purpose. See, the Holy Spirit is the source of the anointing for your life. Let's read 1 John 2.20, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible because it really it's so good. And it says this, But you, now I want you to just stop and say, God's talking about me. He's not just talking about Lisa or preachers or ministers. He's talking about me in the scripture. So, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted, and prepared by the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit is just telling me right now, there are some of you that are watching and you feel like your life means nothing. You feel like your life is over, that you are disqualified. And God is saying to you, you have been set apart. Don't argue with me, God says. You have been set apart. You have been specially gifted and you have been prepared by the Holy Spirit. That is a word in season for you right now. And I just want to encourage you to stop, uh, stop sitting around in self-pity and thinking that your life is over or thinking that because of what you've gone through is going to keep you from the will of God. No one can keep you from the will of God. Nothing can keep you from the will of God. I went through a divorce in my early 20s. Listen, it didn't keep me from the will of God in my life. I've gone through so many things in my life. But listen, God still used me. He had a plan and a purpose for me. And God is trying, the Holy Spirit is trying to expose that lie in your mind right now. And in the name of Jesus, I say that you are free from that lie and you will follow God and you will do all he's called you to do. And I thank you, Father, that you will stir up the gifts that you have placed in them. You will begin to show them the things that you have for them in Jesus' name. God put greatness in you. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us. He illuminates our minds. He guards us from error. Did you know the Holy Spirit will guard you from deception? The Holy Spirit sets you apart. He gifts you and he prepares you for your purpose and assignments. Let me define the anointing for you because it, it sometimes it can be hard to understand, but it's really simple but powerful. It's just because something is simple to understand doesn't mean it's not powerful. The anointing is God's strength working in you, his ability, his grace, and his power working in you. I'm going to say it one more time. The anointing is God's strength working in you, his grace working in you, his ability and his power working in you. The anointing is the power of God. And just catch this. The anointing is the power of God flowing through you. And it's also the anointing of the Holy Spirit working through you. See, the, the Holy Spirit will flow through you to help other people. See, we are a container of God's power to set the captives free, to preach the good news, to help people, to love people. But the Holy Spirit will also work in you to equip you for your calling. You are anointed to do what you call to do. It doesn't matter if you're in the ministry or a lay person. Listen, whatever you do, Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to anoint you, to give you ideas, to give you wisdom. Listen, God, God will set you above those around you because you are following the Holy Spirit. I have a friend and her husband works uh, in, in dealing with investments and money and, and he has been promoted in his, uh, 
his, his business, the company, because he prays about what he does and God gives him wisdom. And he's made, he's caught, because of his, the Holy Spirit wisdom, he has helped other people make so much money through their, through their uh, investments. See, that's the Holy Spirit helping him do what he's called to do. Isaiah, let me mention another, uh, another aspect of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah uh, 10, 27 says, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that destroys the yokes and the bondages in our lives. See, there are some things that only the anointing can do. You see, I, when I was thinking about how somebody came to my mother for prayer a few years ago and she said, I, I have breast cancer and they want to have, uh, do surgery on me this week or the next week. I can't remember exactly. And my mother prayed for her and that anointing to heal was present. And she came back in a month or two and said, Lisa, your mother prayed for me. And I want you to tell her when I went back and they took the x-rays, the cancer was gone. See, only the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do that. It takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit to break addictions in your life. You tried and you tried on your own. Sometimes we can't do it on our own. We need that anointing, that unction of the Holy Spirit to break every yoke and every bondage. I, I know that even in my personal life, I, I have to have the anointing to be a wife and be a mother. And I, I know I make mistakes, but I also know when the Holy Spirit leads me. I know that I need the anointed to help me study and to preach. I wouldn't be preaching if I, wasn't do, if I was doing it alone. And I'm no different than you. You are anointed to do what you're doing. And you can depend on that anointing. See, we're not limited by our lack of qualifications. We're not limited by our feelings of insecurity. I tell you, people have told me before, Lisa, when you preach, you sound so confident. And I think... I, that is amazing that they would tell me that because, you know, I was so insecure for so long. But see, that's the anointing that helps me to be bold and courageous to speak his word. Uh, David was anointed by God to become the king of Israel. The apostle Paul was anointed to reach the Gentiles and their kings. Peter was anointed to reach his own people. Esther was anointed uh, to, to talk to the king and save, uh, the, uh, save her people from the extinction of a wicked man named Haman. Deborah, in the Bible, the prophet Deborah was anointed to, uh, to destroy uh, the enemy. So there, the anointing is in you to do what you've been called to do. See, in the body of Christ, there are people who are anointed to serve, uh, to lead, to pray, I love it because we have a prayer team and they pray and they intercede. You people are anointed to encourage, to give, and, and for specific assignments. The scripture in Romans, let me find it here. Romans 12, 6 says this. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So whatever field you are in, you can depend on the Holy Spirit to anoint you with the gifts strength and power that you need. Amen. That's good preaching, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Another way that the Holy Spirit leads us and speaks to us is number 12. The Holy Spirit will lead you in prayer. You see, one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is, an, is as an intercessor. And um, we can depend on Him to help us in prayer. See, many times we do, not, we do know how to pray about certain things because we know what the Word of God says. The Bible teaches us how to pray. So many times we know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit will show us when we don't know what, what to pray for. He may lead you to pray certain scriptures over you or your family. The Holy Spirit will also lead you to pray for people who are in need. And so, but I, I want to talk about this. This is why I teach on praying in tongues so much because the Holy Spirit will intercede through you. And I want to look at um, Romans 8, 26 and 28. I want to read it to you. Uh, I think it's out of the NIV. But listen to, listen to how the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And He who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You see, the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. He knows the mind of Christ, and He will pray according to God's perfect will through you. See, God, remember, remember that Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will transmit to us what Jesus speaks to, to Him. See, the Holy Spirit has inside information that we don't have. And when we pray in tongues, we're speaking mysteries to God. We, we don't always know what the Holy Spirit is praying through us, but we can trust Him to pray what we need. There, and there are times, I will tell you this, there are times when you're praying in tongues that the Holy Spirit gives you glimpses of what you're praying for. This has happened to me. I, I just thought of one example. One time I was praying for one of my children in tongues, and as I prayed, the Lord spoke just showed me, dropped in my spirit, how to pray in English uh, over my son. And so I began to pray that over him. And you know, I didn't know why I was praying that. It was a little unusual. But about a year later, something came to light and it made total sense to me. I was praying what he needed at the time. See, God is so amazing and supernatural like that. The Holy Spirit had inside information and had, he had me pray it through, as they say. Uh, many years ago, I began to have this great compassion. This is my last example, this, my great compassion for my husband, Kevin. And I began to pray for him one day. You know, I love my husband, but I knew it was the Lord. So I would pray for him as the Holy Spirit impressed upon me anytime I'd think about him. But one day as I was praying, I just had this impression that his brother was going to pass away. Now, his brother had been sick, but he was getting chemo and we expected him to recover. And so I didn't tell Kevin, but his brother had been like a, a second father to him because Kevin's dad died when he was 18 years old. So I, when God impressed that upon me, I knew I needed to pray that God would prepare Kevin and that he would help him. And so when his brother passed away, God did comfort Kevin and helped him greatly. In fact, he performed part of the memorial service and he was such a great witness for Jesus to his family and friends. God is so good. He had me praying so that the Holy Spirit could prepare my husband for that time. Well, I've shared 12 ways all together that you can recognize the leading and voice of the Holy Spirit. As a believer, you have supernatural direction from God. And I'm calling you, I'm challenging you to become more aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. He is God in you and He will speak to you. He will lead you when it is appropriate and necessary. So let's listen for His voice. Let's be perceptive about His leading. Galatians 5.25, it says this, If we are now living in the Holy Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. That's the Message Bible. Let's keep in step with the Spirit. It's an exciting life. It's a supernatural life. And God is going, I believe God is going to open up your eyes to begin to see. In fact, I'm going to pray that. Father, I pray that you'd begin to open up the, the spiritual eyes of your people today and that they would begin to sense the moving of the Holy Spirit. They will begin to sense when that a divine flow of compassion is flowing through them, when they need to minister to someone. Father, I, I pray that they're going to be able to, uh, to hear your voice, to recognize your leading in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Before we leave, it's, I'm, I'm not done yet because this is the most important time of the service for me because I get to invite you to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ if you never have known Him. And so I want to give every person this opportunity to have a personal relationship with God today. 
If you've never asked Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior, you can do that today. I'm going to pray the prayer. And then I invite you to pray this prayer with me right now. I'm going to give you time to repeat it after me. God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I am in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Amen and amen. Did you know the Bible says that when you prayed that prayer, it's like God deleted all of your sins and you just got born again on the inside. You are new on the inside. Your past has been erased and God has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. He's given you His righteousness. And so now you're a child of God. I hope you just say that right now. I'm a child of God. God is my heavenly Father. And I'm telling you, He will help you navigate your life better than you could ever, ever do on your own. He has great plans for your life. So I want to encourage you to stick with Jesus. If you can come to the church in the Houston area, please come. Let us help you grow in the things of God. If you can't, watch online. We have a, we have a great course called uh, New Beginnings that you can take online to help you learn what it means to be a believer. Amen. So let me close with a blessing. Again, I just want to thank you for tuning in. I pray that you are encouraged. Know that God loves you. He really, really does love you. He's really thinking about you. He knows every detail of your life. Don't let the enemy tell you anything different from that because God is working when we don't see Him working. God is moving when we don't see it. He is God. Jesus, Jesus is your shepherd. And when you can't see Him, He's still leading you. You are a sheep and He's taking care of you. So know that today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. I receive that. If you receive it now, just say, I receive it. God bless you. We love you.